Being able to pass the ball in Madden 25 is extremely important. The first thing you'll need to do is decide what passing type and settings you'll want to use. I prefer placement and accuracy with a small pass lead increase and reticle speed anywhere from 5 to 10 seems to be fine for what I prefer. During a play to activate this pass type, hold down left trigger and then pass like normal. The goal is to get your pass to show up as green and that gives you a more accurate pass. Yellow still fine and then um, blue I believe is is perfect. You don't have to activate it every time. Just did a normal pass there. You don't need to use this passing type every time you throw the ball, but it's nice to have that option. And it does give you a little bit uh, more flexibility on where you want to throw the ball. Especially if you're throwing into tight windows, it really helps out a lot in those situations. Revamp passing is good as well. It's better for putting a little more touch on the ball, getting the ball over the linebackers, and getting just a little bit more air on deep passes, but you don't have quite as much control when throwing into tight windows with revamp passing. But I will say I've used both. They're both completely viable. My advice is to go into practice mode with your preferred team and preferred playbook and see what passing option works for you. Whatever you choose, start off with pass lead increase of small and radical speed. Keep it pretty low and just increase it and see what works best for you. I would say these are the easiest settings. I'll kind of show you what happens. Let's say you put it up to medium. I'll leave the radical speed there. You need to be a lot more careful. Show you on the same pass play here. It's just a lot easier to overthrow your guy. So you just need to be a lot more careful when you have a, a medium pass lead. And then here's revamped. It just looks a little bit different when you pass. You have this, the meter is a little different. You can see it there. But it gives you a little bit more control as far as the, the arc that you put on the ball. Next, you'll want to make sure you have a plan. When picking your pass play, you want to anticipate what defenses you think they might come out in. And then have your audible sets and hot routes in mind. Have those ready in case they're not in a formation that you're expecting. Once you've picked your play, you just want to quickly read the defense. How I like to do that is quickly take a look at what they have out there. Cornerbacks, they're kind of shaded to the outside a little bit. They're not lined up directly or close to directly over the receivers. That tells me it's most likely a zone defense. And then you have your two safeties both back. And that typically tells me they're either in a cover four or a cover two defense. So right now they're in a cover four. Let's say they go into a Tampa two. Looks pretty similar. The corners, they came down a little bit, but it's a very similar look. And then cover two man, the corners come in a little bit. The difference between those three defenses are pretty subtle, but if you pay attention, you can figure out what they're most likely in. Now let's take a look at cover three. One of their safeties come down. There's your cover three which is going to be similar to cover one, but the corners line up a little bit more on top of the receivers. So that's kind of how to quickly read their defense. As long as they don't have their defense disguise or they have it, you know, base align, you should be able to generally have an idea of what they're in. If they disguise it, you just kind of have to take a look at their tendencies and it takes a little more figuring out, but you you can definitely do it. So let's say you're not sure what type of defense they're in. A look like this, they're probably either in Tampa 2, Cover 4, or Cover 2 Man. One way to narrow it down is just put one of your guys in motion. Something like this, you can see they just kind of shift with you. They don't have a defender following you all the way across. That typically means they're in zone defense. So we'll switch it up, put the guy in motion. You can see this guy follows him all the way across. That typically means that they're in man defense. 
now you've read the defense you have a good idea what they're in you want to pick a route or route combos that should beat this defense i can see it looks like they're in cover three one route that works against cover three are seam routes so it doesn't show the play art doesn't show because madden's a little buggy but i put x on a streak here that's going to go up the seam and then i put y on a corner I assure you I did. You'll see how the play... There we go. Finally, it shows up. So we've got X on a streak, Y in a corner, and then we have B going up the other seam. Against cover three, this works because that safety can't cover both of those routes. And then you have Y, and then you have that wheel route going to the outside, and that pulls the other cover three defenders to the outside a little more and gives you a ton of space in there. So you want to find a route combo like this that'll work. Yeah, if you're not sure they're in cover three or cover one man, you want to have another route out there that will beat, say, cover one man. And a lot of times Y will beat that. So that'll be your second read. So you do want to give yourself options like that. But if you're pretty sure it's in cover three, you just hike the ball. And then you hit your read. And you get an easy score. All right, so I'll quickly go over some formations that beat different coverages. So we'll start with cover two man. One thing that beats cover two man is the wheel route. So in this play, you have B they go up the seam and that is going to pull the safety inside a little bit which allows this wheel route to go one and one on the outside and he gets wide open down that sideline cover one the corner routes actually work a little bit better against cover one so put a couple guys on a corner out you can see it just torches cover one and then against cover two, slants and drags typically work a little bit better. Deep in routes will work against cover two. So you just want to find specific routes that, that work well against each type of coverage. So we're go going up against Tampa two. This wheel route torches Tampa two also. Let's see, it's wide open down the sideline there. And then another thing you want to do is Go over your reads. So something like this. It looks like they're in cover one man. You've got your play that's your cover one man beater. You want to go through your progressions. So a play like this, your read is going to be A is going to be your first read on that little zig route on your tight end. And then B, it takes a little bit longer for B to develop for that route to develop develop so that's going to be your second read and then you see x is on a deep post you want to hit that route very late after he gets past the safety so that's going to be your third read so you want to go through your progressions that way see a a gets open so you just dump it off to him say nobody gets open till late you want to hit your last read terrible throw but you get the idea you want to go through your progressions based on how long it takes the routes to develop, and you want to hit the first guy that you see open. You just want to take those yards. So the next thing you want to do is set up your protections. To set up your protections, first thing I do is I typically just hit left bumper, and it shows who's going to be blocking, who's assigned to block who. I set my running back there. So now if they're doing, if I think they might be as doing a zero blitz, I block my running back. Now he's going to pick up that mic defender there if he decides to come in so now you've got every single defender there covered in case they're blitzing let's say you want to shift how your guys are are picking up blockers actually i want to id that mic because i don't want him blocking that cornerback there we go now we've got everyone picked up and tried to pick up that corner i don't think he's blitzing from the outside there so now we've id'd a different mic it sets everything up you can also shift your protections. So I hit the left stick there. That's a, a right stick to the left. That's going to shift your blocking a half slide to the left. Didn't really change much, but let's say you do a full slide. That's going to shift your protections. Let's say I think that corner is going to come in on a blitz. That's going to shift it all the way there. 
and then your halfback's going to be assigned to pick up that right defensive end. You can see it play out here. You can see how the running backs, they like to cut block. So sometimes if they have a really good defensive end, you want to assign your halfback to block that defensive end because it'll cut out their legs and they won't be able to beat the defender as easily. And it actually allows you to more likely to be able to roll out. Another thing you can do if they have a really good defensive end that's getting a lot of pressure on you, you can block your tight end, hit left trigger, hit down on the right stick, and that'll set you up to double team. And then you can double team that defensive end. Show play out. Look, it's really hard for him to get through the line. He's getting pushed back. Gives you a ton of time to make a terrible throw <laughs> for an interception, but you get the idea. Um, Double team on the outside there. It's a very effective way of keeping a really good defensive end for get, from getting in and getting pressure on you. Another thing you want to do is know which routes are your delay routes. As an example, we have this play post cross. You see those two blue receivers there? That means they're going to stay in initially to block, and then they're going to go out on a route. So you see these two guys, they're assigned to block someone if they end up not blocking someone they'll go out on a route or they'll stay in and do a little chip block before they go out on their route see everyone's picked up there why goes out on a route late so you just want to know who those delay routes are so you know where your protection is and know where you can throw the ball late and they're typically going to be open Another thing you want to do is know which receiver is going to come back to your quarterback late in the route. A lot of times late in the game, the other team will put everyone back into coverage. And so now you've only got one or two people rushing you. You've got all the time in the world and nobody open. You want to know who's going to come back for the ball first, throw it to them late, and you can get some big yards that way. Sometimes the receiver icon will disappear so you want to keep it in your head you know if they send everyone into coverage which guy is going to come back first and know which receiver icon it is and then you can throw it to him late it's waiting waiting you see b coming back you can hit him late for some big yards another thing you want to keep in mind if someone's getting pressure in on you, don't be afraid to throw the ball away. But you want to try to get out of the pocket when you do that so you don't get intentional grounding. If you throw it while you're in the pocket there during a game, if you're in the pocket and do that, a lot of, the, a lot of times they'll call intentional grounding on you. So you hit your last read. Get out of the pocket, nobody open, just throw it away. That'll keep you from taking a sack or making a bad interception. Also, don't be afraid to take a sack in certain situations. It's A sack is a lot better than throwing an interception in most situations. Sometimes, you know, it's late in the game, you need a touchdown, you want to just throw it out, you know, it's third or fourth down doesn't hurt to throw it up there but a lot of times taking a sack isn't the end of the world another thing is you want to always have a run play as an audible and make sure to mix in the run that really helps with it helps play action works better it helps keep the user down on down in the box so that they're not able to just have free range to to go for interceptions so you definitely want to mix in play action or you definitely want to mix in run plays to help out with those things it also helps keep the linebackers down so you can throw it behind those linebackers and then the last piece of advice i'll give is you want to choose what pass plays you're going with to to help manage the clock just always keep in mind you know let's say there's a minute left in the in the half a minute and a half maybe you don't want to throw a bomb quite yet you want to run a little bit more clock wait until there's about you know less than a minute between a minute or 45 seconds then try to hit them with a deep bomb for a score giving them you know around 30 seconds give them time manage the clock so that they're in a situation where they have 
not very much time at the end of the half so that they might make a mistake. And just be mindful of that when you're choosing which pass plays you want to go with. And that's pretty much it. Hope this was helpful for you guys. Let me know if there's anything I left out that you guys think might be helpful. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time.